When you are making a decision, it's not wise to be tempted by all numbers that are printed on things. Rather, it is rational to measure the actual utility value that you will get from that thing. Therefore, in decision analysis, we calculate the utility value rather than the actual outcome from an event. Okay, what is the utility value? Utility value is a simple number, usually between zero and one, that indicates someone's level of satisfaction. Say someone is in a desert and he is very thirsty. One bottle of water will make him super happy. Possibly he may give everything he has for that first bottle of water. For the second bottle of water, he will be happier. But after he gets the third bottle of water, he will be full and he won't necessarily buy the fourth or fifth bottle of water with all the money he has, right? Because the more bottles of water he gets, at some point, the utility value for each additional bottle of water becomes less and less. That is the idea of a utility function. Utility function is a mathematical function that mimics a rational person's behavior regarding his level of satisfaction as he or she gets more things. Okay, if you are not familiar with these math expressions, please do not worry at all. The SpiceLogic Decision Tree software will generate and calculate the utility functions for you, as you will learn afterward in this tutorial. If someone is poor, he or she may take a big risk to get even a little extra money. But when someone gains more and more wealth, he or she will not take a risk to get a little extra money because the utility value for each additional number of money gets diminished. Here is a plot for a typical utility function for money. You may wonder why someone would not want to get extra money even though he or she is wealthy. Well, please don't get me wrong. I'm not saying the person won't want to take the extra money, but I am saying if there will be a risk involved to get that extra money, or if the person will have to compromise something else, which is also important for him or her to get that extra money, then a wealthy person will not be tempted to take that risk. When using the Spice Logic Decision Tree software, if you use a numerical type criterion for your payoff, then you can associate a utility function to that numerical attribute. Behold, you have a gallery of utility function options. Here is the most interesting panel. You can add as many points as you want to this graph by double-clicking an empty space. Then you can drag and move the point to represent your utility to that payoff value. Let me show you how this utility function is presented in that payoff panel so that you can get a feel for it. Notice that when you change the payoff, the green vertical bar represents your current payoff and shows you the utility value for that payoff in that chart. Also, notice the utility value is calculated and displayed accordingly. Now, let's get back to the utility function editor. Notice that there are various insights generated from your utility functions, like math expressions that represent your function, risk aversions, marginal utility function, etc. If you are uncertain about your utility value for various payoffs, guess what? There is a gameplay wizard available for you. Just play it like a game by answering your certainty equivalent for various gambling scenarios, and your utility function points will be generated accordingly. Okay, once you got your utility points, you can refine them again. Notice this checkbox, Satisficing. If you want that, after getting a certain payoff value, you will be fully satisfied and you won't care anymore. Then you can specify a satisfying point. Notice how the utility function is changed based on this value. Again, you can drag and move your utility point anytime you want. You can check this box to indicate that a payoff is not acceptable if it falls below a threshold value. If that happens, then you will see a red color indicator for that payoff everywhere. All right, now let's see what other utility functions look like. Here is the exponential utility function. 
The Spice Logic Decision Tree software will let you derive your risk tolerance based on a sample gamble where you can specify your certainty equivalent. Okay, now let's check the Bernoulli utility function. Bernoulli utility function is a logarithm-based function that maps real-world gain to perceived satisfaction level. Finally, you have the complete freedom of making your own utility function using an expression with the variable x. You can use various math functions like square root, exponential, log, sine, etc. as you can see from the help panel. Then a corresponding chart will be created as shown here. You can have various types of criteria for payoffs like subjective type, number type, and yes-no type. Say you want your house to be beautiful. How will you measure beauty? It is a subjective type, right? And say you want to minimize the cost of the house. Here, the cost is a numerical type, right? From this dropdown, you can choose the type of your criterion. The first two types, maximize and minimize, are for the subjective and numerical types. These options are for yes, no, or Boolean type. If you choose the subjective type criterion for your payoff, then you will be able to express your level of satisfaction using a slider, where your slider position will directly represent your level of utility on a 0 to 1 scale or 0 to 100 scale. By the way, you can change your scale from this preference section. Notice that you can set the utility scale as 0 to 1 or 0 to 100%. You can also specify if a negative number can be used as a utility value, so that the negative number will represent disutility. Let's apply the concept of the utility function in a decision-making process. Say you want to purchase a new phone. You have just two objectives. Number one, maximize hard disk space. Two, minimize cost. But you know that you have a total of 20 gigabytes of data to store. A maximum of 35 gigabytes will be more than enough. Your budget starts from $500 up to $2,000. You have identified two options. Number one, Phone One offers 30 gigabytes of disk space and costs $700. Number two, Phone Two offers 80 gigabytes of disk space and costs $1,500. Let's start the decision tree software and set up the criteria. Say you have equal priority for both objectives, maximize disk space and minimize cost. You can leave the pairwise comparison as one is to one. Now, let's create a decision tree with two actions. And set the payoff values for both options. Now, remember that we did not incorporate any utility function. Rather, we consider the payoffs with real numbers. In other words, we judge the options as more is always better. Based on that method, you got phone two as the recommended option as it gives the highest total payoff. But as you remember, that idea is not rational. Let's use a utility function to see how the decision gets improved. Let's visit the criteria page and model the utility function for our hard disk space. You can double click on the panel and a utility point will be added to that point. And then using the mouse, you can hold and drag that point according to your preference. One easy way to add satisficing boundary is to check this checkbox. Once you click the OK button in that editor, you will see the decision is updated and phone one is the recommended choice now. And you can easily understand that phone one is the right choice for you. Why? Because both phone one and phone two almost satisfies your need for disk space in a similar weight. 
So no single phone is giving you significantly more advantages than another phone based on disk space. So your deciding factor is now primarily the price. As phone one is less expensive than phone two, phone one is the winner now. Finally, we learned that more does not always mean desired. Rather, there should be a boundary line that defines your satisficing value. When you make a decision, do not fall into the trap of more. Instead, define your utility function and then judge your options. You will be amazed at how good a decision it can be when you incorporate utility functions in your decision-making process. I hope you will find this tutorial helpful for creating a payoff with a utility function in a decision tree. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach our help desk. Thank you for watching.